time. To us, it's the rate at which events pass, and we measure it in seconds, minutes, hours, days, etc., etc. But how does time behave on a broader scale, like across the universe? Well, this was a question that really intrigued a lot of 20th century physicists, and eventually led to Einstein's discovery of time dilation. His discovery proved that no matter where you are in the universe, time is completely relative and changes depending on two key variables. Let's look a little closer. Okay, so pretend that mankind has traveled throughout the galaxy and set up two civilizations on other planets. Suppose that right now, a stopwatch at every civilization starts at the exact same moment. After 30 minutes on Earth, our stopwatch will display 30 minutes. But if we pop over to stopwatch 2, we can see that it displays just 15 minutes, and down at stopwatch 3, a whole hour has passed. How's that even possible? Well, it turns out that it's the result of two key factors, the stopwatch's physical velocity and their proximity to mass. Let's look closer at planet 2. We can see that as it orbits, it moves from point A to point B, traveling 30,000 miles in about 5 seconds. If we graphed this info, we'd see a space-time diagram. This diagram visualizes an object's movement through space and time on the two axes. It got its name because Einstein concluded that everything travels through both space and time at the same collective rate, so he preferred to think of them as one entity. The graph can be thought of like a plane moving at a constant speed. As it travels, its speed is diverted more vertically or horizontally. Space-time works very similarly. Any travel through it is diverted more towards motion or time. In other words, the faster you move through space, the slower you move through time, and vice versa. This also means that if you moved at light speed, you'd time travel into the future, because you'd be moving fast enough to stop the time relative to you while it continued to elapse everywhere else in space. When you slowed down or stopped moving, you'd perceive a jump to the future, because you essentially just missed a portion of the time around you. But what if you could travel faster than light? Well, this is impossible, but if you could, many scientists speculate that you would travel backwards in time. Mind blown. Let's look back at planet 2. There's actually one more reason that experienced just 15 minutes, and it's because of the large mass of its planet. The best way to think of mass in terms of space is that mass bends the space around it. That's the phenomenon called gravity. But if time and space are fused together in space-time, then gravity must deform both space and time. Simply put, mass slows down time. So the more mass there is in an area, the slower time will move there. Kind of like how an empty truck can accelerate more quickly than a full truck since the heavy truck's mass drags on its acceleration. So looking back at stopwatch 2, it now makes sense that 15 minutes had passed, because its planet was so massive and so fast moving that it experienced time slower. And with that in mind, we can conclude that time is affected by mass and motion. So since stopwatch 3 experienced time faster, we know its planet must have a very low mass, and or, it must be moving fairly slow through space. It seems a little unworldly to think of time in this way. From our perspective, time has always seemed to consistently tick away, and for us it has. But out in space, it's a whole different animal, and that makes all the difference.